Are you sewing along with me this year with the temperature quilt? Today we are going to talk about sewing your block together and the process of paper piecing. So grab your templates, grab your uh, fabrics, and let's get started making those blocks. Remember that the pattern is going to be in the description as well as the products that I'm gonna be using in the video. Make sure you subscribe if you are sewing along so you get reminders or emails when a new video drops for this quilt. It's gonna be a lot of fun, a lot of colors, and I'm really excited to see how yours comes together. All right, so let's get started making the block. We are gonna take a look at making our quilt blocks now. So, um, there is an update to the pattern, which includes some cut pieces and how, how you can cut your pieces for your temperature quilt blocks. So this is what I've done. I have labeled each of these the week that they are. This is paper pieced, and so the papers are gonna stay on here until we get our rows together or the quilt together. And so I really need to know what week it is. I also put the dates on here as well. I'm gonna be showing three of the blocks for this month, um, it's January. And so what I've done is I have pre-cut all of my pieces. And so I've, I uh, went ahead and made notes on the temperatures of each of these um, days. And then I went ahead and cut my pieces. So everything is pre-cut. It's laid out in the order that it goes. And as you can see, I do have some temperatures that were the same each day, which is fine. I also have cut out my background pieces. Those are for the two corners. And I also have cut my piece that goes in these bottom triangles. I am going to do alternating, and so I need to make sure that um, I have kind of the layout thought out, um, so when these come together that these are going to be alternating. So that is something to take in consideration when you're setting up your blocks. To cut my strips, I use the shape cut ruler from June Taylor and it has all of these measurements and then there's slits in each. Um, because it is a weird size that I cut, I used this glow line tape which came in really handy and so this is the side that I needed to line my fabric up with and then I needed to use this slit on the ruler for cutting my uh, strips and so I just used um, the tape to place on the ruler that way all my pieces were correct so that's the first thing I did was set up my ruler that I'm going to use and I cut strips out of each of those fabrics. With my strips cut, now I can go ahead and start placing um, them in order. The one we're going to start with is either Wednesday or Thursday. So I wanna make sure that these stay in their order. If you need to mark on the back side, just um, go ahead and do that. You're not gonna see this, it's pencil. And um, really, if that helps you keep track of things, you can either put the initial for the day or the temperature on the back. So what we're going to do is we are going to flip this pattern over and we are going to place this block or this strip on the Wednesday spot. I'm gonna use a light box for this just so you can see the lines. So if you have one at home that'll work great. If you don't, you can hold your paper up to the window and that works as well. This is really helpful when you're setting up your first piece. And so I've got this is my Wednesday and I need to lay it right on top of where Wednesday would go and pin this in place because I don't want this to shift. I don't want it to move. I don't want it to go anywhere. 
this is where we start and then you just want to continue building on e opposite sides. I'm going to start on Thursdays which is the top smaller piece. So I am going to find my piece for this. The first thing we're going to do is fold this paper back and find this line that the print line and we are going to just fold this and crease it. This will show me where I need to place this fabric, making sure that it is lined up with the edge of that and then the seam and I can kind of audition this piece. So we are going to place right sides together. We're going to make sure our piece goes past these lines on the edge and we can pin this in place as well so it doesn't shift and doesn't move and you are going to stitch right on that drawn line. So I'm going to flip this over, I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch on that line. Now that I have that sewn down, you need to make sure that your stitch length is really small. So a 2 or a 2.3, 2.1 is great for paper piecing. You want to keep these stitches really small so it's easier to take off the paper when you are finished. So I'm going to lay this down. I'm going to fold this back and I'm going to press this with my wood presser. So I've got one that I have. Um, that I've used for a long time and then also there's a June Taylor magic seam wand as well and you can just press that down. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the opposite one and so again I'm going to take this paper I'm going to fold it back right on that line that's on my pattern. I'm going to take my next piece place right sides together, make sure my ends are past this line for the pattern, and I'm going to pin it in place, then take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch it. So again, pinning it in place, when I stitch it, I am going to turn it over and I'm going to stitch from the top to the bottom. I don't want to really go past um, too deep into these because we are going to be sewing another piece on that edge and it becomes a little harder to do that when you've got a lot of seams going past. So make sure that you stop and start at each end of that line. And this process just continues as we move down. This piece is quite larger as you can see so what we're going to do is really follow this um, fold line. So when you fold it back it should crease the fabric a little bit as well and so we want to just kind of make it go past that a quarter inch. I don't need to go all the way to the edge because I'm really going to be stitching right here. When you're doing this, you really need just need to make sure that when you fold this back, this piece, this piece lays flat and doesn't move backwards. So as you can see, this one's a little flappy. If you need to pin this, that would work as well before you do the next piece, just to hold it in place because you don't want it to be crooked or not in place when you sew. 
So now I'm going to take it over, sew this one, and then repeat for my last piece. Because this has so much extra overhang, I can take my scissors and trim this off. I'm going to, I'm going to fold down that piece of paper so I don't trim my paper. And then what I can do is just cut right up against the edge of those fabrics. That way I don't get a shadow if you're using light fabric. When this comes back, you won't have a shadow of the darker piece underneath. So I'm going to flip this back, press it with my wood piece, find my last one. I'm going to press it and then lay my last piece down. I'm going to make sure that it's going past this point a quarter inch because this is not, um, that's not the line we are going to be cutting on. We are going to be cutting a quarter inch past that when we finish the block. Pinned in place, I'm going to flip it over and stitch on that last line. This one is a little long as well, so I'm just going to pull this up and Fold over my paper and give this a good trim. Before I go any further, I need to make sure that my fabric goes past everything, especially on this point, and then when I get further down the road, these points as well. So the next piece I'm going to do is this corner piece. From what I've chosen, I want to, I've got my fabric ready for it. So I'm going to, again, follow the same um, steps. I'm going to fold this back to find that line. I'm going to fold it right there on that line so it creases my paper and creases my fabric. That will let me know where I need to lay this down. I'm going to make sure my edges um, are past that drawn line. So you can see the draw the line right here. I need to make sure my edges are past. And then I need to, I can audition this to make sure that my piece is past this point a quarter inch. So um, that really is the most important part of this is making sure that your piece that you've cut is large enough for the block to be trimmed down. So I believe it is. I'm going to pin this in place. And then take this to the sewing machine. Again, I'm going to stitch right on that line. I'm going to fold this back. I'm going to press it with my wood presser. And now I am going to turn this and do my backgrounds. Now, if you want, you can do your backgrounds and then this piece. Either way will work because your points will be the same. So it doesn't really matter, just kind of be consistent. So if you decide to do your backgrounds, then continue to do your backgrounds for all of them. So now I am going to go to the backgrounds. I'm finding my line for this. And I am just going to again press this down. And I'm going to grab my background pieces. All right, so I'm going to line this up, making sure that um, my piece goes past this a quarter inch, as well as at the point. I also can audition this to make sure it goes a quarter inch past that corner as well. Now, don't worry about seeing all of these. We will be trimming them afterwards. So I'm going to put this into place. I'm going to pin it in place and then take it to the machine and stitch it down. 
So now I'm going to flip it over, take it to the machine, and stitch right on that line. All right, with that stitch down, I'm going to press this back. As you can see, with my background, I've got all of these shadows showing, and I want to trim that off. So as before, we are just going to fold the paper down. It naturally folds right on that sew line. And you can either trim it with a rotary cutter or you can cut it with your scissors. So we don't need that large of a seam at either. So I can trim this really down, cutting the top part as well. Or you can just trim it right on that edge. All right, with that done, we can flip the fabric back. And our last piece is going to be this corner. So we're gonna repeat that, finding that line, folding it back and pressing it, lining, laying out our last piece for the block. Make sure right sides are facing down pinning it in place and stitching it along that line. So the last thing we're going to do is trim the block up. And to do that, we're going to flip it over to the paper side. We're gonna make sure that all of our pieces of fabric are pulled out properly. So you wanna make sure that it's um, pressed really well with your wood presser or an iron leave your paper on at this point. It helps secure everything and um, with paper piecing you just don't want to take it out until you are further along in the process. So what I'm doing is I am lining my ruler up to this line on my pattern at the quarter inch line inside. So I want to cut a quarter inch outside of that line. And I'm going to continue this around each side of the block, lining up my quarter inch, and then cutting that off. Want to make sure any notes that you've made are on the inside of this area because the outside is getting cut off. You can save these larger pieces um, for another project because those are kind of bigger scraps. Paper piecing does have a little bit of excess, but everything ends up perfect and you can use these larger scraps for another project that you have. So block one is complete. Now, as you can see, your points are going to line up nicely when you put these together.